Good afternoon. My name is Andy Poskovich. I'm professor at the University of Michigan STEM School of Art and Design, as well as faculty affiliate at the Center for Japanese Studies, also at the University of Michigan. In my illustrated talk, I reflect on some aspects of teaching East Asian water printing and paper making in the context of a discipline agnostic art education at the Penny W. Stam School of Art and Design in Ann Arbor, where I teach. Situated within a comprehensive research university, the University of Michigan, both STEM school and the university's 19 schools and colleges focus on cross-disciplinary learning and international education through study abroad. Within this frame of reference, I will share a selection of recent works created by my students and several leading practitioners of East Asian methods of water printing and paper making the artists whom I have invited as artists in residence to the University of Michigan STEM School of Art and Design between 2011 and 2021. I specifically consider the practice of a group of artists from China and Japan to point how their creative schemes and pedagogies intersect and influence one another and how their distinct approaches to water printing and paper making have been placed into the environment of my classes and the larger context of a discipline agnostic education at STEM School and the University of Michigan. Reflecting now on a decade-long collaboration with the aforementioned artists, practitioners from East Asia, engaging their diverse methods of paper making and water printing in my classes, I recognize that both challenges and opportunities exist with such specialized approaches to art making, especially in a higher education where concentrated discipline learning may be a thing of the past. Nonetheless, my short presentation also argues that traditional discipline-based practices, expressly antiquated crafts such as water printing, paper making, and book making, can be effectively integrated into both discipline agnostic and transdisciplinary contemporary art and design education. One of the oldest public universities in North America, the University of Michigan is a global research university whose art and design curriculum is an open modular structure that allows students to form their own conclusive paths without imposing a general conclusion or structure on their education. In this environment, STEM School of Art and Design was one of the first art and design schools to institute a transdisciplinary curriculum of self-directed study for all undergraduate and graduate students and to set forth the international study abroad requirement for all BFA, BA, MFA, and MDES students. About two decades ago, the school moved away from the idea of individualized silos and specialized departments in the interest of a larger creative and academic education, which places an emphasis on international experience and cross-pollinary learning. While there are no discipline-specific majors in our undergraduate and graduate programs, and consequently conventional departments such as printmaking, painting, ceramics, STEM students do explore printmaking both as discipline-honored media as well as in the context of their broader interdisciplinary work in other areas of study across the 19 colleges and schools of the University of Michigan. In such a discipline agnostic context, students are asked to engage as collaborators and innovators and apply their creative art and design skills in service of the greater good. It might be useful to say that cross-discipline learning here does not necessarily mean that painters and poets are collaborators, although sometimes they are but rather someone like dentists and printmakers, nanoscientists and papermakers. 
naturally advocating for water printing and traditional paper making as a directive to the university administrators and the students presents a unique set of challenges and opportunities for all stakeholders. Instead of prescribing a discipline stipulated track, STEM school students are encouraged to engage their practice across diverse operative, creative, and theoretical domains. In doing so, they are asked to situate their work within a larger framework of ideas and interrogate other areas of study. In this context, I see the teaching of papermaking and printmaking, specifically traditional water printing, as an opportunity for my students to open to creative practices which encompass both studio-based investigations as well as inquiry into the fields of knowledge outside the traditional scope of art and design practice. While the discipline agnostic inquiry affords a broader spectrum of questions to unfold, students are, nevertheless, required to spend time working with their hands, learning and developing both basic and advanced perceptual and operative skills. This is where both traditional crafts of water printing and hand making of fibers based paper come to play an essential role in their education. Students double majoring in art and say business or architecture, natural sciences or engineering, unsurprisingly find themselves both enchanted by water printing and paper making, as well as challenged by the possibilities of probing questions that these traditional arts and crafts practices bring into their own respective domain of study. My teaching is not exclusively centered in the STEM school. Due to my expanded interest in diverse areas of study, I hold joint appointments in several other centers, departments, and colleges across the University of Michigan, including the Center for Japanese Studies. My long and ongoing interest in water relief block printing, traditional fibers-based paper making, and ukiyo-e prints open the doors to such affiliations at the Center for Japanese Studies. Founded in 1946, just over a year after the Allied forces conducted air raids on Japan during World War II, the Center for Japanese Studies at the University of Michigan is the oldest interdisciplinary center in the United States devoted exclusively to Japanese studies. The center promotes and disseminates research on Japan, fosters communication among diverse disciplines, and encourages new approaches in the understanding of Japan and its place in the world. The Center for Japanese Studies is also part of the University of Michigan's East Asia National Resource Center, along with the Center for Chinese Studies and the NAM Center for Korean Studies. The National Resource Center status is conferred by the United States Department of Education. This cross-discipline and collaborative research, as indicated in the example of the Center for Japanese Studies at the University of Michigan, affords the students and I opportunities to explore interest in Japan and creative practice outside the conventional boundaries of art, design, and singular silo-centered aspects of learning printmaking. From this juncture, my students aspire and pursue more nuanced, discipline-based research. If we consider that the 21st century needs creative people who will see the world beyond the traditional boundaries of national origin, race, class, language, and so on, and if we embrace the argument that our conversations are and will continue to be necessitated by complexities such as climate, racial and economic disparities, upward mobility of some versus a collective whole, this conversation raises questions about what role should art 
especially discipline-based practice such as printmaking, and more specifically, traditional crafts such as papermaking and water printing play in higher education. I situate my question not merely within the framework of my own creative practice and teaching, but more essentially within academia and higher education that have continuously drifted away from artist-based studio practice in recent decades, leaving many studio art programs in peril. To conclude on a high note, and to emphasize the importance of creative pedagogies of many visitors to STAM school and their profound impact on my teaching of Mokohanga and Japanese papermaking, I shared the works of select visiting artists and my students. Printmaker, papermaker, and Tokyo University of the Arts Professor Seichiro Mida approach to drawing and printmaking is situated at the intersection of East Asian and Western European aesthetics. Mida San uses shallow wood carving process to capture the essential aspects of visual language, line, shape, texture, reflecting the artist's long-standing interest in the gestural aspects of East Asian calligraphy while intrinsically pointing towards early 20th century European Expressionism. Printmaker, book artist, and China Academy of Arts professor Fang Limin is one of the foremost artists and educators in the field of contemporary printmaking in China an acknowledged leader in the water method of woodblock printing, an art with ancient roots in China, and now widely used in contemporary printmaking, Fang Limin's work is noted for its innovative use of traditional printmaking methods. He has represented China in major international print, biennials and triennials, and his works are in major public collections in Asia, Europe, and North America. The work of printmaker, book artist, and Central Academy of Fine Arts in Beijing professor Chen Qi comes in three manifestations, books, films, sculptures, and water prints. Working beyond the traditional purveyor of Chinese art, Chen Qi creates surreal bravura water prints that resolutely live on their own terms. Papermakers and artists from Obara, Aichi Prefecture, Tomomi Kano and Hisashi Kano spearheaded the research conducted by my students, colleagues and I in the sustainable harvesting of Kozo, Mitsubara and Gampi fibers for papermaking and printmaking. Their effort helped us consider new ways to take the traditional crafts in new directions, promoting Mokohanga and Washi papermaking as practical instruments for living and engaging in the present. Inspired by the writings of Rachel Carson, Arnie Ness, and others, the work of Olivia Arau McSweeney, The Ecological Self, examines the relationship between the ecosystems she's a part of as the impact of climate change and other ecological issues become more drastic and urgent. The ecological self allows Olivia to see herself as a part of the ecosystems she lives in, instead of an outside observer or controller of it. And seeing herself in this way makes protecting the environment an act of self-love and self-defense. Margaret Ruth Wybe explores Mokohanga printmaking in Orihon artist book format as a way to convey issues of the genetic component of schizophrenia. Margaret says about this work, What does this mean for my brother now and my dad? What it meant for my grandpa and what it might mean for my children? As a way of working through these thoughts, I have been using images of neurons of people with schizophrenia. These images are helpful because they are a concrete representation 
of a disease that can often feel incomprehensible. At the same time, their surreal nature still manages to convey the spaces my brother sometimes seems to occupy. Elizabeth Hungerman explores Mokohanga printmaking in Orihon artist book format as a way to speak about how Flora connects her mother to her grandmother and aunts as a reflective personal family memoir. Elizabeth says about her work, visiting each house, it is easy to spot those plants that have been shared. Our garden at home tells of many years worth of plant exchanges with family and friends, a living, breathing memento of long, happy relationships. From the garden outside to the plants and teacups and bottles cluttering the kitchen windowsill, plants have always been a strong reminder of home to me. This is a part of the reason I find them to be important. Plants surround us and are essential to life, yet many people seem to barely notice their existence. Plant blind, they ignore the beings who provide us air to breathe and food to eat. Elizabeth's work seeks to bring attention and appreciation to forgotten plants while celebrating the personal significance many of these plants hold for her. From the pressings she has taken from the plants surrounding her home incorporated into her paper making, to the microscopic images she has collected at STEM school and used as inspiration for her prints, and the environmentally conscious practice she engages in, plants have inspired all aspects of her work. Thank you.